mine was 14. I got 12 right and 12 wrong. And then guess what, people? Same as W. I also got 12 out of 24 right. The second place winner is going to choose a movie that he at least enjoys, loves or enjoys, but everyone else hates. We're both in second place, and we both get to decide what movie that we like that everyone else hates to review for our channel. In 2015, WWE fan Justin Watches Movies and I, we all got together to do our predictions for the 2015 Academy Awards. And then on the night of the 2015 Academy Awards, WWE fan Justin Watches Movies and I, we all looked at our results together and Justin Watches Movies was actually the winner for the Academy Awards 2015 prediction game. So congratulations to Justin. He got to be in first place. Me and WWE fan were tied for second place and no one got third place so because I came in second place I went ahead and chose that I'm going to be reviewing this movie and no you are not high I am actually holding this movie in my very hand right now Everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review Spider-Man 3. So Spider-Man 3 is of course the third and final installment in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. The film is directed by Sam Raimi, it is written by Sam Raimi and Ivan Raimi, and of course the film stars Topher Grace, Kirsten Dunst, James Franco, Rosemary Harris, J.K. Simmons, Topher Grace, Bryce Dallas Howard, Thomas Hayden Church, and James Cromwell. And Spider-Man 3 is about when there's this this little black symbiote and this black symbiote can cause you to be very evil it brings this darkness in you that you don't want to have however Peter Parker does use this black symbiote and because of this black symbiote that he uses he's not the Peter Parker that we all know he is a completely different person he is evil he has darkness in him he just has darkness that doesn't really come out of him unless he puts on this suit now, as far as performances go, I don't think there's really a single bad performance, honestly. Well, for the most part, and I'll get to that later. But I do think Tobey Maguire as Peter Parker slash Spider-Man, he is still really good as his character. Of course, when he is his good self, he can't really allow his inner demons. It's once he puts on that black suit that he completely lets out all of his inner demons. Uh, the stuff that he holds in, it completely comes out. And it was something very cool for the film to do. It's the concept of the black suit making you the person you don't want to be. You don't want to be that person that is just all dark and gloomy. And yes, I'll even say it. I did actually really enjoy Emo Peter Parker. I didn't really mind the Emo Peter Parker. Yes, was it unnecessary? Yeah. And yes, was it over the top? Oh, absolutely. It is freaking over the top, but it makes me laugh, honestly. I actually really enjoy the emo Peter Parker. And I thought Tobey Maguire did a really good job being all silly for the most part when it comes to emo Peter Parker and him having that emo hair. So yeah, this black symbiote suit does a lot to you if you put it on. And when you see him in the black suit for the first time, that is so awesome. It is like when he's just hanging upside down with his web and just sees that reflection. Kirsten Dunst, I really enjoyed her in this film. I thought she did a really good job, just like with Tobey Maguire. She's been really good in all three of these movies. And while Peter Parker is having his own struggles, I find it interesting that Mary Jane is having her own struggles. She has this whole thing with the Broadway play and her having to deal with critical reviews. It made me feel very bad for Mary Jane because you can tell that she really wants to succeed, but 
things aren't exactly going her way. So I like that Mary Jane had her own side of the storyline for us to really care about her. James Franco, of course, he still continues to be very good as Harry Osborn slash New Goblin. Even though with New Goblin, you only see him in the beginning and the end of the film. And for him being considered a villain, New Goblin's really only a villain in the beginning of this film. And that's something I do disagree with in terms of too many villains. I don't think there's too many villains in Spider-Man 3, to be honest. I actually think it does balance the villains well. The main villain is obviously the Sandman. New Goblin, like I said, he's really only the villain in the beginning because he is very good once we do get to the final act of Spider-Man 3 because he does help Peter Parker. So what's considered a third villain? Eh, he's only really in the beginning. And of course with Venom, we only see him in the last 20 to 25 minutes of the movie. So you really don't see Sandman and Venom together until the climax. So this whole movie, the majority, the Sandman is obviously the protagonist. So I don't really have that feeling of too many villains. I think for what the movie handled with the villains, I thought it was balanced well, obviously giving the most screen time to the Sandman. And as I said with Mary Jane Watson and Peter Parker, I actually really like that Harry had to face his own conflict. He's trying to deal with this coma after with what happened during that fight scene with him and Peter Parker, which I personally thought was a very exciting scene. Despite an issue I did have, which of course I'll get to my negatives in, I still absolutely love Rosemary Harris as Aunt May. She continues to just bring that sweet personality that Aunt May has and you just really care for her. Not in the film a whole lot, but when you do see her in this film, she does do really good and she just shows why she was honestly such a great casting choice for Aunt May. J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson, he is still awesome in my opinion. He just shows why he's the best casting choice for J. Jonah Jameson. J.K. Simmons really does resemble this character very well. There's a very funny scene with him trying to take the pills in this movie. That's all I'm gonna say. It's like him trying to control his anger. That was definitely the funniest scene out of all the J. Jonah Jameson scenes in Spider-Man 3. The other one is the camera bit at the end of the movie. That always gets a nice laugh out of me. And then of course you have the new additions in this film. Like you've got Bryce Dallas Howard as Gwen Stacy. Beautiful actress, very talented actress. And I thought she really captured Gwen Stacy very well. Obviously, with Sam Raimi, he gives it his own spin with these movies. It's kind of like the Dark Knight trilogy directed by Christopher Nolan where he gives his own spin with these movies. It works when Sam Raimi does it here. Obviously, Gwen Stacy isn't like Peter Parker's girlfriend or anything, but I still thought for what Bryce Dallas Howard was given for this film, I still thought she did a really good job. I actually thought she made a really good Gwen Stacy. And then, of course, there's also James Cromwell, who did a very good job playing Captain Stacy. And then there's also Topher Grace as Eddie Brock. Now, I know this is known as a miscasted choice to many people, and obviously I can see why, but as far as Eddie Brock goes, Topher Grace honestly played Eddie Brock very well. I actually thought he did give a very solid performance just like with everyone else in this film. And then, of course, I have to talk about Thomas Hayden Church as a Sandman. Wow. I do feel like Thomas Hayden Church steals the show out of all the antagonists here because he's definitely the most fleshed out in this film. You learn about the Sandman's backstory when the movie begins. I would say like about like what a good 10 minutes into the film you get introduced to Sandman, you see his backstory and right from there you see why he's doing all the things that he's doing throughout the film. He has a motivation and even though he's doing wrong things you can still sympathize with him. I cared about the Sandman. Despite him making wrong choices, 
I still felt so bad for him because you can see why he's doing all these things and his backstory is actually quite heartbreaking I'm not gonna lie it actually makes me cry in a few scenes especially once you see him get his powers as a Sandman like that scene where you see him all sandy for the first time and you could just see how lost he is he's very lost as a human being you know it's not that he's a bad guy he's just a man making these mistakes he's doing the wrong things when there's other ways that he could resolve his issue that's in his backstory when you see the sandman sandy powers in this film when he's just flying through everyone that actually looked really cool i thought visually when you look at the sand it's really beautiful also when it comes to the antagonist i really like that all of them had very clear motivations you really understand why each of these antagonists are doing what they're doing obviously we all know why harry osborn slash new goblin hates peter parker we obviously know that because of what happened with his father and then obviously you have eddie brock who hates peter parker Parker because of Peter Parker getting him fired because of these false photos so obviously that was a clear motivation and the Sandman you know it's not like him doing all this stuff because he hates Peter Parker he's just really doing this because of what happened in his backstory Sam Raimi just like with the first two movies he continues to do a really great job directing this film all of the shots looked very nice very professional framing you can see what's happening he just does a really good job of making you very immersed into this world and speaking of immersed the action sequences in Spider-Man 3 are still just as exciting just as engaging as the action sequences in Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man they're still very well filmed action sequences they're a lot of fun to watch and they still honestly have me at the edge of my seat because Sam Raimi he really knows how to handle action he just has a certain technique he uses to make you feel like you're in the action with spider-man cinematography as well is very well shot you can see what's happening very clearly and the daytime and the nighttime the nighttime is very very well shot I feel like definitely my favorite moments dealing with the cinematography is definitely when spider-man is in his black suit and he's just looking at himself as I said earlier with him hanging upside down the score as well is still fantastic you still get the same score you're familiar with from the first two movies as well as other scenes in the film where we do hear a little something different in the score and definitely when it comes to the score of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies it's definitely one of the greatest scores in comic book film history and just film history in general I can listen to the score forever and it's still great to hear it in Spider-Man 3. I also really like that the movie still has a sense of humor basically just like with the first two movies when the first two movies need to be funny it feels necessary it doesn't really feel forced they add humor at the necessary times and that same thing happens here in spider-man 3 like the evil peter parker thing for the most part i thought they had a really good sense of humor you can tell they were going goofy with the whole emo peter parker thing and yes as silly and as ridiculous it is it's still very fun to me and the bruce Campbell scene that's one of the funniest scenes by far in Spider-Man 3 I love the Bruce Campbell cameo in this film and then of course with JK Simmons you have those bits add to it something I always praise Spider-Man 3 for are the themes that it really dives into the movies about forgiveness it's about revenge how there's always a choice in life there's never just one choice you know you don't have to go on the wrong path you can still go in the right path and make your life better how holding in your emotions isn't going to help how darkness can be a horrible thing revenge isn't right the movie delves into all of these things that 
I have to give huge credit to the writers Sam Raimi and Ivan Raimi for because they explore so many things and I think it's very relatable when I look into these messages because us as humans we're all gonna go through that one way or another we're all gonna have that point in our lives where we just feel nothing but darkness you hold in all these emotions and then you're gonna have that one day where you hold in so many emotions that you're just gonna snap and just get crazy when honestly it's better to just let all your emotions out rather than just laying it hold in not bottle it up inside your body and then you're gonna have revenge to think about but then your subconscious is telling you not to go out and do revenge because even though you think revenge is gonna make you feel better it's not revenge is actually just gonna make things worse and I really liked how Spider-Man 3 really explored that especially in that one scene when Peter Parker told Aunt May about Spider-Man going out to hunt Sandman because of something. And I love that one scene with Aunt May and Peter Parker because everything Aunt May tells Peter Parker regarding how revenge is wrong is so true. And of course, the other aspect I definitely applaud the film for is forgiveness. In life, no matter how angry you are with someone, you know, you don't always have to immediately like forgive them because you might be so angry at them for something, but there has to be that one point in your life where you really search down in your soul and you just tell them, I forgive you. Not only did it fit for what Spider-Man 3 was going for, but I think for someone like me and I think for everyone out there, it is something that we can all relate to. And the last positive I have to say about Spider-Man 3 is definitely the fact that they wrapped up the Uncle Ben storyline. Yes, they wrapped it up in Spider-Man 2, but there was a little something that happened that we apparently didn't know about in Spider-Man 2002 that they now just mentioned in Spider-Man 3. And I thought how that whole aspect was handled was handled very well. It was very engaging to me, and I have to say once we do get to the very end of Spider-Man 3 where that Uncle Ben storyline officially concludes, it does honestly make me want to tear up. Of course, at the end of Spider-Man 3, that's where it ties into the whole I forgive you thing, which is another thing that uh, hits me every time I watch Spider-Man 3. Now, as far as problems go, yes, there are a few problems I do have with Spider-Man 3. The first problem being Gwen Stacy. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I think Bryce Dallas Howard is actually a really great Gwen Stacy. I think she actually does a really great job. However, she is very pointless. As much as I really enjoyed Gwen Stacy, she didn't have to be in this film really. She could just been the girl that Spider-Man saved and then really that's about it. You didn't really need to have all of this extra stuff between Spider-Man and Gwen Stacy. It is something that was unneeded and I feel like of all the subplots that we have in this film because we do have quite a bit of subplots in this film, the Gwen Stacy thing could have just been shaved off as much as I really enjoyed the character. There's also this one scene where Peter Parker and Harry Osborn, or should I say New Goblin, was fighting against each other, and I thought that was a very exciting action sequence, but the green screen was very noticeable in my opinion. I really was actually surprised how noticeable the green screen was during that fight scene. It was still very exciting, it was still very fun, but I did get very distracted at times because of how noticeable the green screen was in that one specific scene that I thought could have been polished better. In other moments of Spider-Man 3, I actually thought it looked very good. It's just in that one fight scene for some reason where I can really, really notice the green screen. Also, as far as the emo Peter Parker thing goes, yes, like I told you, it's ridiculous, but I still really enjoy the ridiculousness of the whole emo Peter Parker thing. It's just once 
we got to the scene where we see emo Peter Parker taking Gwen Stacy out on a date, which is really just to make Mary Jane jealous. You know what scene I'm talking about if you've seen this movie. Once we got to that scene, that's when I did feel like the whole emo Peter Parker thing was starting to really run out of steam. And the biggest problem I personally have with this film, and it's the one flaw I can honestly agree with everyone that doesn't like this film, is yes, Venom. Now, like I told you, I think as far as Eddie Brock goes, Topher Grace does a really good job. But once he's Venom, I have to say, Topher Grace, I love you, man, but you're pretty freaking bad. Like, his acting is cringe-worthy. And Sam Raimi didn't even want Venom in this film, but the studio had so much creative control that, nope, Venom is in this film. I just think the studio should listen to Sam Raimi because what was the point of shoehorning in Venom? Even though, yes, I did really enjoy seeing Venom in action when we got to the climax, which I also think is very exciting to watch. But yeah, with Venom, not exactly a villain you really needed in this film. Overall, you guys, I honestly adored Spider-Man 3. I'm being very honest when I say that. I really adored this movie. I think it's a very underrated film. It's a very underappreciated film, in my opinion, of course. I just think the film still delivers the great elements that Sam Raimi brings with the first two Spider-Man movies. The characters each have to face their own conflicts in this film. There's a lot of deep messages dealing with forgiveness, revenge, the choices you make in life, all of that that great stuff that make the themes just feel so meaningful. The acting is still really great, direction still really great, cinematography is still beautiful, and the film really does end this trilogy in a very sad but happy note at the same time. And that's something I do have to say. I love the ending of Spider-Man 3 because it just gives very great closure to the trilogy. The last five minutes of this movie just seriously beautiful. And yes, granted, while Spider-Man 2 is still the best in the Sam Raimi trilogy, I still think Spider-Man 3, for what it's delivering, it's a great comic book movie, in my opinion, a very underrated film, definitely a film I'm happy to be reviewing as a film that I really enjoyed, or adored in this case, that everyone else didn't really enjoy at all. And that's why Spider-Man 3 is going to get Three and a half out of four stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. And since I just reviewed a movie that I really enjoy that everyone else hates, I want you guys to comment down below a movie that you really enjoy that everyone else hates. Also, you guys, I would recommend checking out Justin Watch's movies, The Sound of Music Review, and WWE Fan 0599's Van Helsing Review, because those are the movies they had to review for their channel as part of the whole Oscars prediction game. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, you guys, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!